We're talking Steve Biko today, and I will start you off with a quote from him, which I'll give you a couple seconds to read. As you can see, big believer in pride. Your goal for the screencast is you should be able to explain the importance of Steve Biko's life and death. Uh, again, both of those are important, and keep that in mind as you watch. So there he is. And some stuff about Steve Biko, uh, again, not super important. He lived for 31 years from 1946 to 1977 and became known as a martyr in the anti-apartheid fight. And we'll talk more about that as we move through this screencast. So what did he do? He helped found SASA, which was the South African student organization, in 1968 and was elected its first president. And importantly, SASA evolved into the black consciousness movement. And we will talk about what the black consciousness movement is in just a second. However, the question is, why is there this organization springing up in 1968 that becomes very influential? That's a great question. It's actually one you know the answer to. Because the question is, where's the ANC? Because this is the most important kind of black rights group in South Africa. And if you'll remember, the leaders of the ANC had been caught and put in, on jail in Robben Island, which is that island off of Cape Town in the middle of the ocean. And this was at the Ravonia trial, and that ended in 1964. So in 1964, the ANC is shattered, and so out of that kind of leadership void, or into that leadership void, steps, among other groups, Sasso and the Black Consciousness Movement. Mentioned that, mentioned that, blah, blah, blah. And we also mentioned that. Repetitive. So... Black Consciousness Movement believed that liberation for non-white South Africans from apartheid rule would come from two key areas. Number one, there needed to be structural changes, particularly laws in South Africa, that got rid of the racist apartheid rules. And this belief was very similar to that of the ANC. The Black Consciousness Movement was different, though, in that they believed a psychological change needed to happen, that black people needed to believe in the value of their blackness, and that they needed to stop seeing who they were as a detriment, or who they were outwardly as a detriment. And as I said before, the Black Consciousness Movement derived its name um, from this emphasis, and this is kind of what it made it very different from other anti-apartheid groups during, this, during the, the fight for racial equality in South Africa. So how did the Black Consciousness Movement do this? They had black community programs. These were medical clinics. They aided black entrepreneurs who were business people. And they helped hold adult education and literacy classes to try to increase education for all of the black South Africans. And a quote from Biko here that the power of the movement lies in the fact that it can indeed change the habits of the people. This change is not the result of force, but of dedication of moral persuasion. And these black community programs really tried to change the habits of the people by giving them an education, by giving them business opportunities. However, like many anti-apartheid leaders, Steve Biko got banned in March of 1973. And this meant, when, when you got banned, um, what it meant was that your freedoms were really, really limited. Biko wasn't allowed to speak to more than one person at a time. He wasn't allowed to travel within South Africa at all without government approval. And he wasn't allowed to leave South Africa. And clearly, the government wasn't going to be very lenient in terms of allowing him to, to break or bend these rules. Now, Biko gets killed, and we'll hear about that during the TRC case, but he gets killed by South African police officers. And at his funeral, somebody said that Steve knew and believed strongly in being, that being pro-black was not the same thing as being anti-white. The black consciousness movement is not a hate-white movement, despite all, all that you have heard to the contrary. It is no cheap slogan to say that black consciousness seeks, as, see, as Steve saw, the liberation of both black and white. Black consciousness meant, excuse me, black consciousness and being concerned for black liberation was and is utterly committed equally to white liberation. And this white liberation would have been from the racist apartheid laws and the ideology and mindset that made people believe those laws were okay. So what happened because of Biko's death? Because he was so famous both in South Africa and around the world, and you saw that with that Peter Gabriel song, news of his death spread really quickly. And it helped to show the world, because he was killed by the South African police, it helped to show the world the brutality of the apartheid regime in South Africa, very similar to the, what the Sharpeville massacre had done. What happened was more external pressure got put on South Africa to change apartheid and to end its laws by countries and by multinational corporations. 
Additionally, Pico's funeral, because he was so well known, was attended by many foreign diplomats and ambassadors. So it was a, he was a, he was a highly respected man around the world for the for the for his work in the fight to end apartheid in South Africa. So your goal for the screencast was to explain the importance of Biko's life and death. Hopefully you can do that. If you can, great. If not, head back and rewatch section of the screencast. Thanks.